What's going on everyone? You're back with your boy Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to have a look at multi-step probability experiments again, but this time we're really looking at two key words, with and without replacement. So this is just a continuation of what we did last lesson. So if you're not 100% sure what we did, please have a look at that video just to make sure you're on top of all the maths. The best thing about this topic specifically is that the maths does not change at all. You already know all of the information. The only thing that's going to change here is the language that's used in each question. If you're on top of the language, you're going to get these ones right every single time. The formula for finding the probability that two or more things happen in a certain order that you're looking for is just the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B or you just multiply the probability of the events together and you'll get your answer. So one of the easiest examples for this, if you flip two coins up in the air and you need to get tails twice, the probability of that happening is a half multiplied by a half, which is equal to a quarter or about 25%. So this idea of probability of A multiplied by probability of B is all you need to know for this lesson. We just have to work out one little thing that could change our result. So the first thing we're going to look at is this thing called with replacement. So all this means is that anything that happened the first experiment round or the first game round, no matter what happened, that thing is then replaced. So it's exactly the same for the second go. So an example of this, if you were giving random cards to someone, if you gave them a card, they put it back in they could get the same card because you've reset the deck. So you still have the exact same 52 cards for both goes. And to see how we can work out problems using this, we're going to have a look at an example here. So this is what I call magic M&Ms. So I've got three M&Ms in a bag. And I'm going to pick one out randomly. I can't see what they are. But the reason that they're magic M&Ms is because every time you pull one out and eat it, it just replenishes. That exact same color just pops back in happy days, you're never going to run out of chocolate. So I want to work out what the probability is that I get a red M&M, eat it, and then it pops back in and I get another red one again. So for this, all you've got to do is a third, because that's the chance of getting the red the first time, multiplied by a third, which is equal to one over nine. That's your final answer. Another example could be a red and then not a blue. So I'd have a third again, one over three is my red chance, multiplied by two over three, for the not blue, and that just equals two over nine. So these questions are really, really easy. They're kind of your baseline questions for this. You're just doing the first experiment twice, three times, four times, all the way down. Nothing really changes. So this is kind of the definition of with replacement. If you run the same game or the same experiment again and again, the sample space does not change. The situation does not change because it's been replaced. So you can really just think about doing the same probability over and over again, and that's all you've got to think about. And as you probably guessed, without replacement is kind of the opposite. It is a little bit harder, you've got to think a little bit more, and this is because the sample space is always changing. Because what you do in the first experiment then dictates what's going to happen in the next one. Something might now not be possible because it's happened the first go round, and you've got to account for that in your calculations. So in a much more real life example, if you've got a normal bag of M&Ms, same thing again, we've got one red, one green, one blue. If you eat one of them, it's not replaced. It's just gone forever, unless you buy another bag down the line. So this time, what is the probability of me getting a red and then a red? Pretty quickly you'll go, uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen, and we'll see why. So if I eat that red one, I've got a one out of three chance for doing that, and now there are only two options for my sample space for the second step of this experiment. What's the chance of me getting a red out of a blue and a green? Well, it's zero divided by two. So the sample space has changed. We know that this is equal to zero. So this situation is impossible because there is no replacement. Once it's gone, it's gone. And then for the next one, if I have a probability of getting a red, again, one over three, and now I've got two options for my second go. I could get blue or green. So I said the probability of not blue, which is really just green, and that's going to be one over two or 50%. Now all I've got to do is multiply these two things together. A third times a half is equal to one over six, and that's my final answer. 
So the thing that really changes here, the thing that you've got to be on top of, is that the second step or the probability of B will change because of what happened in the first one. And it's going to change every single time. If you're aware of that, you're going to find these super easy because the maths doesn't change at all. It's still just probability times probability equals full marks. And that is kind of the definition of without replacement. The next thing is always going to change. The denominator or the bottom number of your fraction will always change in this situation and the numerator might change based on what you're actually looking for and based on what previously happened. So just reading the question is really, really hyper important for these questions because maths isn't that hard. You just have to know what's happened in the first go so you can correctly identify what is going to happen in that second go round. So my big pro tips for these are please go slow, especially with the second fraction. This is the one that could change up. So if you're just taking your time when you write that second fraction down, just in your mind going, oh, I wonder if this is going to be the same, that will absolutely minimize your chance of making a mistake here. The second thing that I would highly recommend is please just highlight the word with or without during the question. If it doesn't have those specific words in the question, just write a little note to yourself saying with or without replacement, just so you don't make a mistake when you're going through it. Just getting on top of this kind of setting out for these questions will get you the whole way there. And I think you're going to find these pretty easy once you get into them. Thanks so much for watching this lesson, guys, and I'll see you later.